Hey, welcome back to the first of two final episodes of ABC 123. We have made our way alphabetically through what seemed to be my entire CD collection, but we were only focused on one of three places that my CDs are kept. Spoiler alert! Uh, so today we're going to discuss my basement CDs and tomorrow we're going to discuss my office CDs. So what do I mean by basement CDs? The majority of my CD collection is kept in our guest room on a set of seven shelves. I estimate about a thousand CDs are up there. Uh, you've seen that as my backdrop for several of the episodes. Uh, but my entire collection would not technically all fit up there, so I've weeded out some of them for storage down here in our unfinished basement. So, I have them in these boxes like this, which are official shipping boxes um, when the record companies send them out to the stores. My mom used to work at a Christian bookstore, so that's how I got these. Um, I've got about 10 of these boxes with uh, roughly 30 CDs in each, so another 300 CDs down here uh, in the basement. Um, the stuff down here is primarily Christian CDs from the 1990s. Any Christian bands that I still listen to on a regular basis are upstairs in the guest room, um, but there are a ton that I don't really listen to so much anymore, and they get relegated to the basement. Now, I don't want you to think that it's all junk because it got sent down here. There's some great stuff down in the basement. Uh, the Christian alternative, pop, rock, metal, dance, folk, hip-hop genres are all uh, well represented. And we're just going to get a brief look at a few of those that stand out the most to me. So, if this is the epilogue to ABC 123, then we've earned a 1234. Uh, we're going to look at four CDs today from the Basement Collection. First up is one of the pioneers of Christian rock music. This is Larry Norman. Now, he's best known for songs like I Wish We'd All Been Ready or Why Should the Devil Have All the Good Music. But this is his 1969 album put out on Capitol Records, so it was a big release, a big deal. Some would call this the first full-blown Christian rock album, uh, but that's debatable. Um, plenty of his stuff is awesome, uh, but I picked this one because it has my favorite Larry Norman song on it. This is called Sweet Song of Salvation. Here we go right here. Alright, Larry Norman. Uh, that's the shirt I've got on tonight, by the way. This is, I think, a self-portrait. Uh, signed by Larry there at the bottom. Um, so, uh, up next is a fun group called Lost and Found. Uh, I discovered these guys when I was in high school. Uh, it's one guy on guitar and one on piano, and they're both singing. They call their style Speedwood, which is basically just saying it's really fast acoustic music. Um, I, uh, I kind of compare them to like the Violent Femmes or They Might Be Giants. They have kind of a nasally, uh, real quirky sort of way of presenting themselves. Um, they have, a, for example, a small stone that they have with them in concerts uh, with a little light switch glued to it. And so they flip the switch to on and they hold the stone up and they say, Rock on. Uh, so yeah, that's what we're dealing with here. 
Um, but they've made a career of kind of flying under the radar. Uh, they do youth conventions and church gigs and stuff like that. Uh, but they've built a strong following by word of mouth and by constantly touring. Uh, they had a big song, relatively speaking, called Lions. Uh, oh, them lions, they can eat my body, but they can't swallow my soul. No, no, no. Okay, just in case you've heard that one. Uh, but this is my favorite Lost and Found album. This came out in 1998, uh, and it has a song on it that I'm going to play for you called Be Not Afraid. Be not afraid. And found. All right, so that's just a little taste. Uh, Full-length versions of all these songs will be in the comment section. Um, up next is Steve Taylor. Now this is a double disc box set, a really cool presentation of his greatest hits. This came out in 1994. Um, I started listening to Steve Taylor when I was probably in third or fourth grade. Uh, he made a name for himself in the 80s and 90s as being very uh, satirical. Uh, songs like, I want to be a clone, whatever happened to sin. This disco used to be a cute cathedral. Uh, since I gave up hope, I feel a lot better. Uh, and the controversial, <laughs> I blew up the clinic real good. So, uh, nobody else at the time was really willing to confront Christians with this kind of a critical, uh, sardonic sort of perspective. Uh, so this was highly influential on my worldview at the time, whether I realized it or not. Um, he was also in a short-lived band uh, with some really great other musicians that were well-known at the time. Uh, the band was called Chagall Guevara. Uh, and this was in the early 90s. They put out some great stuff. Um, and right now, they've actually finished a Kickstarter that I contributed to um, so that they could record some new material, release a live, a live album, and another version of their main album that is out of print. So, uh, I'm going to play one of the Chagall tracks. This is called Escher's World. Chagall Guevara, Steve Taylor, um, excellent stuff. Our fourth and final entry is the band Stavesacre. Um, this is their debut album as a group from 1996 called Friction. Uh, I picked these guys because they kind of stand in for all the heavy metal bands that I was listening to in high school and beyond. Uh, lead singer Mark Solomon was in one of my favorite bands at the time, a punk slash speed metal band called The Crucified. Uh, while they were amazing, uh, when they kind of closed their doors and Staves Acres opened up, uh, it just kind of really took it to that next level. Uh, this is one of my favorite songs in all of Christian music, period. Uh, and it's called At The Moment. Um, I really love the uh, emotion. It's, it's like a prayer of lament that by the end evolves into a song of praise. Um, great complicated music, um, beautiful, great vocals. Uh, this is the real deal. So At The Moment by Stavesacre.
All right, so that's a brief journey through the basement collection. We've got one more episode to go before packing it up for ABC123. So, uh, see you tomorrow for the grand finale.